In part one of this series, we went over the so-called barbarian or savage tribe, a tribe mentioned in Breath of the Wild and creating a champion, which was said to have worn the barbarian armor, who resided in Faron and were believed to have been called the Sonai tribe. That is, until the release of Tears of the Kingdom, where we were told a very different story. If you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to do so, as this video will pick up from where that video left off. With that said, let's dive deep into Tears of the Kingdom's lore and learn of the mysterious people of the sky known as the Sonai. The history of the Sonai people dates back to before the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule by King Rauru and Queen Sonia, in a time beyond memory or known written records, but few details have survived the flow of time. The Sonai are said to have lived long ago, in the time of earliest legend. They possessed godlike powers and had a prosperous civilization in the sky, atop islands that floated high above the clouds. But this was not always the case. Before they raised their civilization to the sky, the Sonai once lived on the surface of the world, and even below it, raising their civilization to the sky with the use of their advanced technology. The Sonai resembled humanoid goats, although it would be more accurate to describe them as humanoid dragons, given their design is directly influenced by those of the servant dragons who protect the sacred springs since ancient times, whose design, according to enemy artist Satomi Usui, were made to have a mammalian face and body, like a dog or a goat, and their arms containing elements of both birds and human hands. The Sonai had white hair, tinted with colors on their underside unique per each Sonai, akin to those of the elemental dragons, with Rauru having a yellow coloration to signify his power of light, and Minoru a bluish hue to depict her spirit power. Just like Dinral had an orange tint to depict fire, Nedra had a light blue tint to depict ice, and Farosh a greenish yellow to depict lightning. But their most important characteristic was the third eye on their forehead, which remained closed at all times except when they were using great power or were overcome with great emotions such as rage. In religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism, the third eye is said to be a mystical invisible third eye, usually depicted as located on the forehead, which provided perception beyond ordinary sight and representing the enlightenment one achieves through meditation. The Shika, while not having a third eye themselves, painted their Shika eye crest on their forehead as a symbolic third eye, which symbolized the Shika seeking the truth. It is said that long ago, the Sonai descended from the sky carrying secret stones gifted to them by the gods, powerful artifacts that would amplify the powers of the wielder. Rito legend spoke of an event in a long distant past that detailed the creation of the legendary Stormwind Ark, which would also come to be known as the Wind Temple. They spoke of how a Sonai god fell from the sky, stealing the winds of Hebra. Wanting to aid this god to reach the heavens, the Rito took turns in attempting to carry the deity with the proud wings, but they were unable to. After gathering materials under the guidance of the god, the Sonai created many boats that floated them to the islands high above the clouds, and they rejoiced in song before reluctantly returning to the land below. In gratitude for their help, the Sonai god gifted the Rito the Stormwind Ark, a gigantic ship that floated high above Hebra Peak, and the Rito were blessed with winds ever since. The Sonai also helped the Gorons with the construction of the great city of Gorondia, the Sora with the ancient waterworks as well as the wellspring, and the Gerudo in building the Lightning Temple, as evidenced by their architecture and technology within these locations. Eons after the Sonai tribe's descent to the surface world, the Sonai were said to have perished, although no mention of how and why has been given. The last remaining members of the Sonai civilization were two siblings, 
a man named Rauru, and his oldest sister named Minoru. Using the knowledge of the Sonai, Rauru became a great leader. He met a Highland priestess named Sonia, and soon they were joined in holy matrimony. Rauru gifted Sonia one of the secret stones, and together they sought to establish the Kingdom of Hyrule. Since the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule, monsters had frequently appeared in various locations across the land. As they threatened the people's livelihoods, the worried king and queen personally went on a pilgrimage to various places to eradicate the evil. Using the power of light and time, they suppressed the evil once again by building small shrines to act as cornerstones for the seal, which came to be called Shrines of Light, or as they are known in Japanese, Shrines of Exorcism. Every shrine on the surface had a light root on the same XY coordinate in the depths, with its name spelled backwards. Given this connection, the Shrines of Light were likely the source of light of the light roots, which may indicate that the light roots may have been created alongside the Shrines of Light. When Princess Zelda arrived in the past from a long distant future, Minoru borrowed her Purapad in order to incorporate the travel functionality to the Shrines of Light, and by the looks of it, also to the light roots, bringing into question their nature. The Temple of Time was another great monument built during this time, located in the Garden of Time, atop the Great Plateau, beside Rauru and Sonia's Hyrule Castle. The temple was used in the distant past for many rites and ceremonies of the kingdom. The Garden of Time was said to have been very quiet, with the only sound to be heard being the time bell ringing in the mornings and evenings, where it was as if the whole place changed at its chime especially at night, when the sounds signaled the emergence of fireflies. The Sonai people were an ancient tribe that wielded powerful magic, visually glowing with a greenish hue. Using these strange, innate powers, the Sonai developed magical abilities that allowed them to interact with the world in a multitude of ways. First, there was the Ultra Hand ability, which allowed the user to grab and move objects, rotate them, and stick to other objects. Then, there was a fuse ability, which allowed the user to attach something to an equipped weapon or shield to enhance it, as well as undoing the fusion at the expense of destroying the fused item. They also developed that send, which allowed the user to move upwards through solid material and emerge on top of it, very handy when getting lost in labyrinthic caverns. And finally, there was Autobill, which allowed the user to instantly recreate their Ultra Hand projects using nearby items and sonite, as well as recording previous creations. This ability was placed within a now abandoned Great Central Mine in the depths by a sonai long, long ago, and a stone monument was created to reveal its location. It is unclear if that sonai was Rauru, or someone before his time, but given three of the previously mentioned powers were later found within the Shrines of Light created by Rauru and Sonia, it is possible that Rauru hid out of build underground as well. The Sonai were said to have been the descendants of the gods, gods which gifted the Sonai powerful relics known as secret stones, tear shaped artifacts that were capable of amplifying the wielder's innate powers which would be etched with a kanji rune depicting the wielder's power, and glowing in that power's respective color when wielded, and a pale white in its neutral state. Powers that have been seen amplified by the secret stone so far, are the time powers of both Queen Sonia and Princess Zelda that came in the form of the ability called Recall, which allowed the user to reverse an object's movement until it went back to where it was. The light powers of Rauru, as well as Zelda, which had the ability to seal and destroy evil. The soul powers of Minoru, which allowed her to separate her soul from her body. The wind powers of Tulin and the Sage of Wind. The flame powers of Yunobo and the Sage of Fire. The water powers of Sidon and the Sage of Water. The lightning power of Riju and the Sage of Lightning. And the darkness powers of the demon king Ganondorf which amplified his control over gloom and dominion over demons. When someone consumed one of these secret stones, 
they would undergo a process the Sonic called Draconification, in which they would transform into an immortal dragon, and by doing so, stripping themselves of their mind and sense of self, losing themselves forever. It is because of this fact that the act was strictly forbidden, to ensure no one else would become a dragon. Given we see only three dragons in Hyrule, those being Dinral, Nadra, and Farosh, and their strong appearance to the Sonai, it is a commonly accepted theory that these three dragons were one Sonai who underwent this process of draconification, and likely the catalysts of this act being forbidden to begin with. We can infer they were Sonai, as their appearance is strikingly similar to that of Raru and Minoru, as opposed to that of a Hylian, as when we compare the appearance of the Light Dragon, the draconified form of Princess Zelda, to the other dragons, there is a drastic difference in design, the most important being her small ears and golden hair. This is supported by the fact that three outfits exist in Tears of the Kingdom that not only share the style of the clothes worn by Rano and Minoru, but also are directly inspired by the three elemental dragons, those being the Ember, Frostbite and Charge armors. It is possible that these were once the outfits the Sona who became the dragons wore in the distant past. This art made by Kamamoko Boon on Twitter illustrates what they might have looked like before the transformation. While the Sonai had powerful magic, their civilization truly began to prosper with the discovery and processing of a mysterious material which came to be known as Sonite, a strange green ore found in the depths of the world, which had an incredible untapped potential. The Sonite constructed numerous mines all across the expansive chasms of the world, as a means to extract this material from the copious amounts of sonite deposits deep beneath the earth. In order to see it in the pitch black darkness of the depths, the sonai utilized bright bloom seeds obtained from the surface caves, which bloomed and emitted light when struck. But just in case they ran out of bright bloom seeds, and to ensure their surroundings remained lit, the sonai developed a special miner's armor set with lights filled with bioluminescent material attached to it, inspired by the bright bloom seeds. The Sonai built numerous furnaces to process the Sonite by smelting it. By doing this, they created a material which they called a Sonite Charge, which housed mysterious and powerful energy, which would come to power all future technology developed by the Sonai. And from large Sonite, bigger chunks of this strange ore, they were able to craft large Sonite Charges, which housed even more energy. These Sonite Charges occasionally would solidify into a form known as Crystallized Charges, a fragment of crystal made by condensing Sonite Charges processed from Sonite, with large Crystallized Charges being formed by condensing 20 Sonite Charges, and huge Crystallized Charges from condensing 100 Sonite Charges. But the pinnacle of their technology was without a doubt the Sonai devices, pieces of technology that the Sonai used to build an advanced civilization that flourished for many years. During the time of the Sonai, there were many monsters that threatened their peaceful lives. To counter the threat, they developed Sonai devices effective to be used in combat. These were the Beam Emitter, the Cannon, the Flame Emitter, the Frost Emitter, the Shock Emitter, and the Time Bomb. To defend themselves and as security measures, the Sonai devised a homing card that automatically headed for monsters. They also created a construct head that always faced whatever it deemed an enemy, allowing the Sonai to attach any of the aforementioned combat Sonai devices to it for homing attacks. To be able to traverse the terrain quickly, the Sonai developed small wheels, but these were best suited for flat surfaces and able to handle hills or bumps very well. To remedy this, they developed big wheels that excelled at tearing through environments that challenged the smaller wheels, even able to handle shallow water. In order to transport objects over flat surfaces, the Sonai created carts which needed force to get them moving. They also developed sleds, 
which was probably used to convey things over grass and sand in ancient times. The Sone also built fans, which produced wind with its internal propeller. This allowed them to transport objects, as well as attach them to rafts to cross large bodies of water with a generator thrust, and later to flying machines when they ventured into the skies. As the Sonai reached for the skies, they developed balloons that would rise when filled with hot air, and wings that harness lift to ride the wind. The Sonai also developed small and big batteries that held concentrated Sonai charge energy within them to provide temporary power for other Sonai devices. The Harvest Stones were probably one of the most revolutionary devices the Sonai developed, capable of defying gravity and hanging in place. It was this very technology that allowed the Sonai to create islands that floated in the sky. The Hydrant was another of the revolutionary inventions of the Sonai, capable of gushing water when being struck. When the Sonai moved to live in the sky, the sky islands they had created saw water shortages, but became lush and fertile thanks to this ingenious technology. To be able to illuminate dark areas such as caves or the depths, or even roads in the dark of night, lights were devised, inspired by the bright bloom seeds that grew in caves. The Sonai also created mirrors, which were able to focus and reflect light, which could provide powerful long distance illumination that could even ward off some monsters such as the Gibdos. This device also allowed the Sonai to create mechanisms that activated by redirecting light. In order to cook food almost any time and anywhere, portable pots were crafted to be able to cook one recipe before being destroyed. Rockets were also created, a device which produced a powerful thrust. These were particularly useful not only to reach high elevations by attaching them to floating platforms or their shields, but also as missiles when attached to arrows. As another means to reach high elevations, the Sonai devised springs, which contracted and expanded with great power to bounce objects and people away from them. Another useful device was the stabilizer, which stood upright when activated, which allowed the Sonai to use them to secure footholds in unstable places, such as the Sky Islands. Then, there was the stake, a device that could be fixed in place in any surface, regardless of orientation. The Sonai used these devices as footholds and building foundations because of their immovability when planted. And finally, there was the steering stick, which activated all connected Sonai devices at once and allowed the Sonai to control direction when attached to a conveyance, be it on land, water, or the sky. To power these devices, the Sonai crafted energy cells, artifacts designed to be worn on a belt which served as batteries for the Sonai devices. To increase the maximum energy that can be stored in the energy cells, the Sonai created energy wells by refining crystallized charges at a crystal refinery, with each energy well requiring 100 crystallized charges. Energy cells could store 8 sets of 3 energy wells, making a total of 24, but this limit could be doubled, turning the energy wells a blue coloration, equaling to 16 battery uses in total. As Sonai devices were produced in large quantities, and it could be used anywhere, the Sonai devised a way for these devices to be carried anywhere, by storing them within Sonai capsules, which could not be stored again once opened. In order to easily obtain the desired Sonai capsules, the Sonai created Sonai dispensers which they scattered all across the land, which would grant a number of capsules in exchange for Sonai charges or construct horns. In order to easily remember inventions made of Sonai devices and building materials, the Sonai created schema stones, which could be used with autobuild to recreate the inventions. The Sonai also used the Sonite to develop a plethora of equipment to aid in their struggles against monsters, with a strong and mighty variety, each more durable and powerful than the last. When it came to weapons, the Sonai developed an energy blade using Sonite. By extending the length of the blade, as well as the blade itself, 
they created variations in the forms of long swords as well as spears. When Sonite devices refused to the Sonite weapons, this would resonate to increase their attack power. Much like the bladed weapons, the Sonai also crafted shields, which extended an energy aura of the same type as the blades. The Sonai also developed powerful bows made of Sonite, that drew power from the Sonai's energy cells, allowing for arrows to fly much further depending on how long a shot was charged. However, unlike the shields and weapons, there does not seem to be strong and mighty Sonite bows, at least not any that have been discovered. And then, there was the Sonite armor, imbued with Sonite magic during this production, which granted its wearer improved energy efficiency when using Sonite devices. In order to tend to their habitats and defend the Sonite from monster threats, the Sonite created mechanical creatures they dubbed constructs, or golems as they are known in Japanese. These automations were powered by Sonite charges, and their inorganic bodies were made of segmented Sony stonework held together by green magic. The Sony constructs were devised to be able to act in their own accord, having advanced artificial intelligence, and each given tasks by the Sony, with some becoming so skilled in their specialities that they even surpassed their creators, who began to learn from them instead. In present times, despite the Sony having long perished, the constructs that had not fallen to decay like some seen in various Sonai built locations, still continued performing their tasks day after day, despite their efforts no longer serving any purpose. The steward constructs were the first to be built, which acted as servants to the Sonai. After that, the Sonai crafted other constructs suited to different roles. First, there was the culinary constructs, which knew numerous recipes and knowledge of cooking. Only one of them could be found in the Great Sky Island in present times. Forged constructs were a common type of construct being found in the mines of the depths, processing sonite into sonite charges. Ranger constructs were tasked with the maintenance of the land inhabited by the sonai. Others, for example, knew how to hunt wildlife. Only three functioning ranger constructs can be found in the Great Sky Island. Then, there was the Maker Constructs. These were capable of building things using materials and Sonai devices. In present times, only seven of these construct types were located in the Great Sky Island. Mining Constructs were tasked with mining Sonite, which they would then take to the Forge Construct to be refined. Three minor constructs were found within the mining cave of the Great Sky Island, with the remaining fourth construct being found in the Spirit Temple, where in present times it unearthed ancient blades of Shika technology it would exchange for 50 Sonite. The smithing construct was created by Minoru to try to unlock the hidden potential of Sonite charges, and it was made with the unique ability to temper Sonite for weapons and equipment. When the Seas construct occupied the Spirit Temple, the smithing construct went into hiding returning to the spirit temple after Minoru was reawakened as the Sage of Spirit. Another type was the Caretaker Construct, with only one of its type existing in the world, found in the Construct Factory located in the depths. Its task was to confirm the receipt of the parts shipped from the depots for the construction of crafted constructs, to then have the finished products produced be shipped to Dragonhead Island. He then oversaw the task of ensuring they were correctly assembled. The aforementioned crafted constructs that were assembled in the construct factory were another unique type of construct, capable of being piloted. They possessed the ability to have multiple devices be attached to them, on the tip of their extremities, as well as on their backs. During the time of King Rauru, his sister Minoru created one of these constructs which the demon King Ganondorf later stole and corrupted with his dark magic, turning it into the Seas Construct. The hero, Link, with the spiritual aid of Minoru, crafted another of these constructs to house the soul of the late Sage of Spirits. The leader of the Yiga clan, Master Koga, also restored a crafted construct after obtaining large amounts of crystallized charges 
in order to offer it to the demon king. Aside from the more peaceful constructs, there were those that were not so friendly to outsiders. The Sonic created soldier constructs with the purpose of eliminating trespassers, even if their intentions were benign. Soldier constructs have four variations, each more powerful than the last, each possessing a unique blade-like horn, which could be fused to any weapon. Then there was the Captain Constructs, elite soldier constructs with combat functions more sophisticated than those of the soldier constructs, capable of using the fuse ability to enhance their weapons. Each of the four variations of the Captain Construct had unique types of horns. Unlike the soldier constructs who used wooden bows, the Captain Constructs wield a construct bow specifically made for them by the Sonai, made of fireproof materials. A hornless variant of the Captain Constructs, known as a training construct, could be found in various shrines of light. These instructional constructs were equipped with special combat training functions. And finally, there was the Flux Constructs, giant automations composed of interconnected blocks which they could rearrange to change its shape at will. Unlike the other constructs, the Flux Constructs were powered by Flux Construct cores, which were found within their main block. The Sona used a variety of symbolism in their works tied to their culture and way of viewing the world. Contrary to what we were told in creating a champion, the Sonai did not use the spiral symbol as their crest, instead the Sonai having a symbol depicting an eye, likely in reference to their third eye. This eye symbology is seen throughout all Sonai architecture and artifacts in various forms, such as this symbol depicted on numerous doors, this eye symbol depicted on the old wooden shield, on all the Sonai constructs, and even on clothing such as the Sonai armor. This symbol, while not shown in Sonai architecture, was prominently shown in every dialogue box, as well as heavily used in promotional material, having two Sonai eyes at the bottom, a bright bloom seat in the center, and wings very similar to those of the royal crest on each of its sides with this possibly being the Sonai's true crest. The Sonai depicted each virtue of the Triforce with a different animal, in the form of statues and other ornaments. Power was represented by boars, an animal heavily associated with the Demon King Ganon and the Demon Tribe, the statues of which can only be found in the Faron region. Wisdom was represented by owls, which have real-world symbology attached to wisdom and knowledge. In both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, owl statues are prominently seen across Hyrule. In Tears of the Kingdom, owls are directly tied to Minoru, the Sage of Spirit, a wise Sonai researcher who developed Sonai technology and was even able to understand and incorporate the teleportation function of the Puropad, a creation made of Shika technology from the distant future into the shrines and light roots. Statues within the spirit temple also depicted owls, as well as the crafted construct built by Minoru, one of which was possessed by her spirit. Even Minoru's headpiece, which she wears at all times, depicted an owl. Torches depicting owls were also found within the Typhlo ruins, leading the way towards the Shika shrine through the darkness but this must have been placed there by the Sheikah as part of the Shrine Trial. And then there's Courage, represented by dragons, the most prominent animal in Sonai architecture. The flame, shock and frost emitters mentioned earlier in the video were all created to resemble Din Rao, Farosh and Nadra, but there is a fourth design in the canon, which has a unique horn type, a horn that is shared with virtually every Sonic construction that has a dragon, including the logo itself. This is not any dragon that we have seen, not even the newly introduced Light Dragon or the Draconified Demon King as some sort of premonition of the two dragons' confrontation. This is a unique dragon type, and very possibly the water dragon mentioned in creating a champion, which was said to have been worshipped by the Sonai. The Ember, Frostbite and Charge Armors 
designed after the three elemental dragons, each have a depiction of a dragon on their chest as well. All of these three animals are also depicted in the Sonite Waste God, with the owl at the top, the dragon in the middle, and the boar at the bottom. Symbols of dragons are often used in pairs, with their heads facing opposite directions, seen most notably on many pillars behind the large dragon statue of the Sonai ruins and throughout the Sky Islands. The Sonai also appear to worship sacred beasts identical to the divine beasts. Four of the sages were seen wearing helmets in the shape of the tribe's respective divine beast, with their temples having depictions of these beasts within them. The Sonite bow also had depictions of each of these beasts, reminiscent of the one hit obliterator. The Shika appeared to have none of this and replicated these designs with their technology when they constructed the Divine Beasts, and later crafted helms similar to those worn by the Sages to be worn by the four warriors of each tribe which piloted the Divine Beasts in the legends of 10,000 years ago recounted in the Shika Tapestry. It is unknown what the Divine Beasts are actually based on, but perhaps in a time long before the Sonai, there were once four giant animal regional gods similar to how Termina had its four giants protecting its four regions and respective tribes. As mentioned previously, the Sonai worshipped the Triforce by use of animal motifs, as well as a water dragon, which most of their dragon motifs are said to be shaped after. The Sonai also worshipped Goddess Hylia, having goddess statues in important locations, such as in the Temple of Time. The Sonai of the distant past held a tradition in which Sonai youth who came of age would test their courage in what was known as the Dive Ceremony, which took place in the Bravery, Courage and Valor Islands. The Sonai youths would take a starting position in the island far above the main island, and leap from there, where they would have to pass through all the Sonai energy rings in a set amount of time in order to be awarded a piece of the glide set on each of the three islands, marking the young Sonai's adulthood. In order to start the challenge, it was customary for the Sonai to grant one Sonai charge as an offering to the island. When it came to their language, the Sonai developed their own script, vastly different from any other form of writing seen before, consisting of 14 unique glyphs resembling Oracle Bone script. Unlike the Sheikah script from Breath of the Wild, these Sonai runes have not, as of yet, been deciphered, with the only person capable of reading these runes being the in-game character Tauro, the leader of the Sonai research team. This script is found in almost all Sonai architecture, as well as the Sonai devices, but there also exists a cursive variant of these runes that appears prominently in green Sonai energy pads. However, while some of these cursive Sonai runes match the regular ones, there are some characters that do not match. This leads me to believe that what we may be seeing is a case of ancient Sonai and modern Sonai character types, similar to how there exists in Tears of the Kingdom tablets written in ancient Hylian which are not able to be read by Link, and modern Hylian, the language we can easily decipher which is a transliteration of the English alphabet. Not much is known about what the governance of the Sonai people was prior to the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule by King Rauru and Queen Sonia, but there is an interesting detail in the Lomi labyrinths that may shed light on this aspect of their culture. When venturing into the mazes, an ethereal voice with a distinct sound from those of the Shrines of Light speaks to us calling themselves the ruler of boars in the South Lomé Labyrinth, the ruler of owls in the North Lomé Labyrinth, and the ruler of dragons in the Lomé Labyrinth Island. As mentioned earlier, boars, owls, and dragons are a central motif of the Sonai, each being tied to a virtue of the Triforce, with boars representing power, owls representing wisdom, and dragons representing courage. This means that each of the rulers were ancient Sonai who embodied a virtue of the Triforce. 
as these structures were built by the Sonai long before Rauru's time, and thus before the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule. These three rulers may have been the rulers of the land long before it became Hyrule, with the surface being fragmented into three regions or kingdoms ruled by respective rulers, the ruler of Boz ruling the southwest corner of the world, perhaps encompassing the Gerudo Desert and Highlands, the ruler of dragons ruling the east, perhaps encompassing Eldin, Akala, Laneru, Nekluda, and Faron, with the ruler of owls possibly ruling over Hebra, Tabantha, and the Ridgeland. The names of these labyrinths in Japanese is Rome Castle Ruins, with Rome being an anagram of Meiro, the Japanese word for labyrinth or maze which would make these structures labyrinth castles. Could these castles built by the three rulers have been where they ruled from, akin to how Raru ruled from his castle atop the Great Plateau? Perhaps these three Sonai rulers of boars, dragons and owls may even have been Nadra, Dinral and Farosh, who most likely underwent the process of dragonification as mentioned earlier. Three Sonai who served the goddess Hylia, each tied to a virtue of the Triforce, who became protectors of the springs of power, wisdom and courage when becoming dragons, a sacrifice they may have been forced to make to protect the world from a catastrophe that may have plagued the world in the distant past. Thank you for watching this video, if you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified of future uploads. Also, consider following me on Twitter and Instagram to stay in touch, and consider joining my Discord server. This has been Soldolo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.